Televised sport is a global phenomenon that unites the world. With billions of viewers, this industry is worth tens of billions of dollars a year. The equipment used to beam these images around the globe is already cutting edge. But this technology is about to get even better. These are the most technologically advanced outside broadcast vehicles ever created. Designed to film the world's biggest sporting events in some of the most extreme climates on the planet. This is the story of how the best outside broadcast trucks ever conceived were born. It's December 2011, and in Basingstoke, England, Ian Davis from Sony Professional Services Europe has taken on a unique project. We were approached by ANO Panorama, a large broadcast in operation in Russia, to supply all of the OB vans for the forthcoming Winter Games in 2014. But these will be no ordinary outside broadcast units. And after six months of planning, the team are facing a combination of technological challenges, the like of which have never been seen before. One of the biggest challenges we're going to face on this project is the climatic conditions in Russia. They go from minus 30 to plus 40, a wide range of temperatures, and our truck has got to operate in every single degree of temperature in that range. We've got the technology to squeeze in, latest generation OLED monitors, brand new 2500 cameras from Sony that we haven't used before in an OB project. And not only that, we have to keep the weight down. In Europe, there's a limit of 40 tonnes. In Russia, it's 38. So we've got two tonnes less to play with. This project is going to be a massive challenge, perhaps the biggest challenge me or my team have ever faced, possibly are ever going to face. The man who will be signing off these cutting-edge vehicles is Vasily Kidnazi. We dramatically change the TV production in Russia. From the very beginning, from the very first approach to the vehicle, you see that it isn't the same with what we have. We decided that we are building something new. ANO Panorama want their trucks to stand out, looking stylish on the outside, yet being spacious enough inside to house all 25 operators and an ever-growing mountain of technical equipment. No small challenge. We've built over 300 vehicles in 28 years now. We've got a team of five people here um, who are, are basically doing 3D CAD designs. They've got to try and take what a customer tells you, which may be you know, back of a cigarette packet or something, and try and turn it into a real thing that can be built by the coach builders. The lead designer in charge of this project is Chris Richards. It's completely different looking to most other vehicles. Most vehicles have got very square sides. This has got lovely radius corners. And the other thing we've got on this is two expanding sides. When the sides come in, things have got to go somewhere, so you have to have folding desks. Those folding desks have to fit within the room when it's completely closed up. Nothing can clash. It's a new year, and specialist coach builder A. Smith Great Bentley in Colchester have been entrusted with bringing the recently finished design drawings to life. Over the next five months, these engineers have the task of building the shells and fabricating the interiors for the most technologically advanced OB trucks in the world. The customer was looking for a very clean um, visualization of the truck when it was finished. One of our advantages was the time that we spent building vehicles for the motorsport industry, where they are much more into the style and the look, and therefore we were asked to adopt some of those features into an outside broadcast trailer. So we looked at that and we felt that we could round off the corners, we could have flush doors and the minimum number of handles. With the stylish exteriors beginning to take shape in Essex, over in Penn Coed, South Wales, work is beginning on the high-spec equipment to go inside. Martin Woodfield's team has been charged with building the 72 brand new high sensitivity broadcast cameras. Today we are actually building the Alcam 2500 high definition camera. We have a single cell build, uh, one operator in each cell, producing the whole camera itself. Heather will start with a, with a chassis, 
and then with all the parts she will then assemble to a set standard ready for test. Consistent build is the key. So this is final test. We have Linda here again going through a set uh, sequence to make sure that all the adjustments are correct and all the switch settings are correct and the camera functions correctly. Basically, all the cameras in the ANO OB truck will have been manufactured and tested here on this site on these stations by these girls. It's spring, and back in Colchester, the exterior builds of the OB trucks are nearly finished, and the interiors are also starting to take shape. One of the biggest challenges on this job is the strict weight limit, and supervisor Julian Page is keeping a close eye on the scales. Because of where it's going, it's going out to Russia, uh, there's a maximum weight limit on their roads out there, 38 tonne. So we've had to keep everything absolutely super duper light on this contract. So all the, uh, the sides are made from aluminium, the frames are made from aluminium, uh, lightweight materials inside to keep it within the overall weight of 38 tonne. Wherever possible, we've minimised weight, even down to the small uh, L-shaped metal brackets that hold equipment in racks. We've even manufactured our own version of that with sort of notches and holes cut out whilst maintaining some strength, but just to get rid of excess metal. It sounds small, but actually there's hundreds and hundreds of those equipment supports in, in the truck, and if that can save 40, 50 kilograms, we've done it. Weight restrictions are just one of the demands Julian's team have to overcome as they build a truck that will spend its whole life in Russia. The vast country has one of the most extreme climates on the planet, and these trucks will need to be tough to survive. The temperature range this vehicle has to work in, it has to work down to minus 30 in uh, severe Russian uh, winters, and during the height of their summer, it has to work within uh, plus 40 degrees. We have to think very carefully about the air conditioning that we employed. At temperatures of minus five and below, we have um, devised a free cooling coil so we can take advantage of the cold air outside, which keeps the running costs down and um, the amount of air conditioning to the absolute minimum. After five months of intensive construction, the first coach builds are finally complete. Julian's team have sculpted some unique exteriors. The customer was looking for a flush finish. That means that we wasn't allowed to use any beads, any trims on the outside of the bodywork. If you look at the side of this, you would never believe there's a seam there. But what we've created is a more rounded vehicle with seamless construction, nice radius edges. It's not a box on wheels. This is almost a work of art. This is a complete vehicle, all its bodywork, all its exterior paintwork. It's got all the interior finishes, the flooring, the carpets, the ceiling, all the lighting, all the power supplies. It's what's defined as a rack-ready outside broadcast vehicle for Sony to fit all their technical equipment and the um, technical wiring. But before this rack-ready OB can leave the coach builders, a team from ANO Panorama, including technical specialist Sergey Revin, have flown over to inspect the truck. Мы приезжали туда для проверки точности исполнения ПТС кузова, системы гидравлики, электрики, системы кондиционирования и, соответственно, естественно, чертежа. Если были какие-то ошибки, недоработки, мы это писали в лист согласования для того, чтобы их необходимо было устранить. After a long day of testing, the Rack Ready OB is clear to leave the coach builders, and stage one of the project is finally complete. The next morning, the first truck is on the move. It's heading towards Sony Professional Services in Basingstoke, where over the next three months, it's going to be transformed into a state-of-the-art broadcast system. This is the day project manager Ian Davis has been waiting for. Happy it's here, arrived, and uh, yeah, we can get on and wire this thing now. Wiring team and engineers are going to get straight on this as moment we can get it inside the uh, warehouse there.
while the wiring team in Basingstoke gets to work. Ian's colleagues in Pencoed have finished building all 72 of the truck's new cameras. Once again, testing is critical. And today, a team from ANO has traveled to Wales. In charge of this sign-off is Jason Smith. For the um, acceptance, it normally take up to one and a half to two hours per camera. This is Mr. Gregory, and he's actually from ANO. Um, and we have uh, Vladimir, he's actually from Sony Moscow. These guys are testing the signal to noise of the camera. They're checking the sensitivity. They're checking for any blemishes which actually remain on the CCDs. And there's lots of geometry checks which they'll check as well. For each truck, there's 20 cameras going to each one and four super slow motions, so a total of 24 per truck. ANO Panorama sign off all 72 cameras, meaning the pressure to deliver the finished trucks on time now falls to the wiring and engineering teams. It's May, and back in Basingstoke, all three OB units have now arrived. But that's not all. Each vehicle comes with its own tender truck, which will be used to carry the mountains of support equipment. But on this project, nothing is that straightforward. When we've been talking about this particular project, we're talking about three 24 camera OB vehicles. I think of it more like six vehicles because each of those tenders has got a full blown production suite inside them and in, in their own right are small OB vans. The small production suites in the three tender vehicles can be connected to the main OBs by up to 20 kilometers of fiber optic cable, allowing them to cover live events that are spread over giant distances and they even contain a rest area for the crew. With six vehicles being worked on, the warehouse is starting to get very busy. At the moment, we've probably got over 100 people working on these vehicles. They're working seven days a week most of the time and uh, looking probably around about 14, 16 hours a day as well. So the resources being put into them is, is heavy. With such massive amounts of technology being fitted into the OB trucks and tenders, by far the biggest job the team face is installing the tens of thousands of connecting cables that link all this equipment through the truck's mammoth router. Basically, whatever you see on this schematic is, in real life, a physical cable. Each cable's got a number and is identified, and um, even I must admit I don't know exactly what each one of these cables do, but I'm sure our friends in the engineering and wiring teams know exactly what they do and uh, they know where each one comes from and is going to. One man who knows where all the wires go is senior project engineer Neil Wilson. He's designed how every single piece of equipment fits into these trucks and how the whole broadcast system operates. The image on, on here rep represents a schematic of just one small part of the vehicle. Um, there, there are 12 such large diagrams of this which represent the video, the audio, the network, the control system. One of the uh, chores that we have to do is to test every single cable before it's connected to the equipment. Neil's work is considered a success when you can't see how it's done. Not an easy task when he has to hide over 10 kilometres of wires, weighing more than two tonnes in each OB van. There's quite a deep duct which runs right the way along the vehicle under the floor here. This is basically um, 18 inches deep here and it's full to the top of cable. So you get some idea that there's tens of kilometres of cable inside this truck. This will take us about 10 to 14 days now to, to get all this cable into the places where it's got to be. Under the floor, behind the racks, the places where it has to do its job, but this is how we install it in the first place. The fit out is in full flow and with weight saving still a priority, Ian has just received some very important pieces of equipment. Hot off the production line, these are Sony, Sony's brand new uh, OLED 25-inch monitors. OLED monitors display an HD image on screens made from special LEDs coated in an organic light-emitting compound. Crucially for this build, these screens are thinner and lighter than standard monitors, helping to save Ian's team more vital kilos. The ANO project has been pretty special in the fact that all the monitors are OLED. We're really, really proud and pleased to be able to fit these monitors in the truck. It's June, 
and with work almost complete on the first OB unit, a team of sign writers are finishing branding the trucks. It's a chance for senior project engineer Neil to take stock of the team's hard work. So this is the main production area. As you can see, it's the largest part of the truck. So this is the engineering side of the, the vehicle. We'll end up with six people sitting along here, uh, each controlling four cameras. The equipment that's being used here enable the, the vehicle to operate entirely in 1080 50p mode, which is the, the latest a uh, very high resolution, high definition system. So the, the vehicle is built to be future proof. As we walk through into this area of the vehicle, there are a number of these live slow motion servers. And such is the complexity of this vehicle that whereas one would tend to find maybe two or three of, of these devices on, on such a van, in this vehicle we have nine of them. This represents the highest possible achievement of, of any OB vehicle currently in service anywhere in the world and is capable of, of servicing any live event, however complex. It's a real nice vehicle when you walk inside. You know, everything just looks really well finished. So the monitor stack full of OLED monitors, handcrafted wooden desks. There's a lot of work gone in, into these trucks and really it shows. It's July, and all the challenges that once faced the build teams have finally been overcome. The OB trucks are finished, and the tender vehicles are full of brand new camera equipment. Today is a very important day. The head of ANO, Vasily Kidnazi, has arrived in Basingstoke with a team of colleagues to sign off their new trucks. If everything goes well, these OB vehicles will leave for Moscow tonight. Our expectations were uh, of the car. It's not an OB van. It's uh, OB van and a half. It will be a big, big, big fortune to have such OB van. It's fantastic. They're happy with the coach build and they're happy with the system. So yeah, it's quite a good day today. I'll be happier when I see them on the road, but uh, it won't be long now, hopefully. Now the trucks have been accepted, ANO want them delivered as quickly as possible. So a team of drivers and security personnel have arrived and they're preparing for the long journey to Moscow. Because of the value of these projects, we're talking millions and millions and millions on, on each tender and OB pair alone. We've taken the decision that we would have a security convoy to make sure that the shipment goes smoothly and without any problems. Because of the importance of this convoy, the haulage company's managing director, Steve Mercer, is personally going to drive the lead truck to Moscow. It's Wednesday morning. With a fair wind, we should be in Moscow midnight on Monday. It's a privilege to transport this kit around, and it's a, it's a long way, and it's a big responsibility. For most of us, it's been over a year of our lives in the making. No one on the team will admit this, but I'm sure there'll be a few emotions when that final vehicle does actually roll out of Basingstoke headquarters. Before starting their journey across mainland Europe, the trucks are taken to be washed and wrapped in a protective film. This ensures the convoy will arrive in Moscow in pristine condition. This is by far the biggest project that my department's done here within PSE. Uh, in fact, it's the biggest project for OBs that Sony have done globally. It's been a challenge, but I think we've risen to that challenge. I'm very proud of the team that have um, pulled this together. It's been a mammoth project from beginning to end, but we've done it. 
So fantastic. We've got a customer very happy. We've hit the weight limit. Technology has been pushed into the max and it works and we've delivered on schedule. I'm a very happy guy today. The Sony played their role. We have got the instrument, so now it's our turn to study how to play on this instrument and to organize a concert.